Hi, I'm Kate Tavender and welcome to Planet Parent. We start the show with a look at the controversy around circumcision. Once a common practice, the procedure has now fallen out of favor. And even among religious groups who practice ritual circumcision, dissenting voices are being heard. It's a topic that can fire up passion and heat within a family and in the community at large. In the Jewish religion, circumcision is a covenant with God. I would need to hear a strong argument against it. I believe that circumcision is unethical. I don't take a position for or against. Circumcision is not recommended from medical reasons. To circumcise or not, nothing stirs up as much controversy as that little piece of infant foreskin. Making the decision for our sons forces us to question our deepest values and beliefs. It's an issue that most new parents are not prepared for. We had thought for, for the longest time throughout the pregnancy that Angela would pregnant with a girl, so we hadn't really got into a serious debate over this. To actually figure it out. Mark and Angela had to make a hard decision and make it fast when they found out they were having a boy. We were neither strongly for it nor strongly against it. So there was just a lot of, it was a gray area, and we kind of thought, well, you know, because Mark is circumcised, maybe we will, maybe we should, maybe the, ba you know, Aiden should look like Daddy. A lot of our friends were doing it at the same time, so it seemed like the thing to do. Even parents who were raised to believe circumcision is a given are starting to question the practice. Catherine and Mika are expecting their first child, and they know it's a boy. Well, I'm Christian and Mika is Jewish, so there were a couple of questions that came up with regards to uh, the circumcision issue. I, I took a second look um, and, and sort of asked myself, why is it a given? Why is it the norm? Why is it the way that things just are? Cut. Eva Goldfinger is a humanist rabbi and psychotherapist who helps parents arrive at a choice they can live with. Parents are constantly coming to me to help them make decisions regarding parenting, circumcision, what I like to do is I like to have clients discover what is comfortable for them. That's what I see as my role. Uh, so I sometimes point out information to them that they not may not the have. I mean, I did have some slight concerns about the pain that it causes the baby, but everyone who's been circumcised says they don't remember it. It's only been in the last 20 years that it's been accepted that infants actually feel pain. Dr. Rochelle Schwartz is a mohel and surgeon who has developed a procedure that puts parents and the child at ease. Research shows that infants do feel pain. Research on circumcision showed that infants' heart rate go up, their cortisol levels go up, um, they cry more when they're circumcised. So I think it's really important for doctors and mohels to use a pain protocol. Jews and Muslims have been practicing ritual circumcision for thousands of years but it wasn't until the late 1800s that it was seen as medically beneficial. Hospital circumcisions peaked in North America in the 1970s, but today the claims of medical benefits are being questioned. Dr. Arna Olson is chair of the Fetus and Newborn Committee of the Canadian Pediatric Society. In the statement that was published in 96 and has since been looked at several times and we haven't found any new evidence, the evidence at that time was that there was no medical reason to do a circumcision. The medical benefits versus the potential risks are not the only points to consider. There's also a debate about the young child's human rights. In retrospect, it was definitely not the thing to do, not for us. I just think we didn't feel strongly enough about it to make that kind of decision for him. But yet we did, so I think that was, I think, the problem for us. We just, you know, in our heart of hearts, it wasn't the right thing to do. At least not in mine, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, I think when you say we, you mean you. Okay, I mean me. Yeah. <laughs> the only really sort of big concern about circumcising my son uh, is that my son might resent it later for, for a reason that I might not foresee. Dr. Arif Bimji is a physician and also a spokesman for the Association for Genital Integrity, a group that's launching a precedent-setting test case in Canada. What we're really talking about is forcing a irreversible surgical procedure onto a child at the parent's wishes rather than at the child's wishes. Parents have certain rights, not only rights, but have responsibilities to make decisions for their children. Dr. Aaron Jessen, who performs ritual and non-ritual circumcisions, is concerned about legal intervention. I don't have an agenda that the rest of the world has to be circumcised. Uh, my agenda, in fact, is that the rest of the world should have the option. We're never going to resolve the issue of whether children have rights with respect to circumcision by having a discussion about it. 
the sides are too polarized. The religious groups believe that they have a fundamental right to impose their religion on their children. The Association for Genital Integrity believes that the child's rights to their physical integrity are paramount. The only group in Canada that's going to be able to resolve this conflict is the court. Once the courts enter this area, you cannot separate religion for them, which means that not only are they going to decide whether a Gentile parent can circumcise his or her son, but if it's not allowed for Gentile parents, then that means Jewish parents would also not be allowed. You're going to be creating a position where the Jews and Muslims are either going to have to go to jail or they're going to have to uh, give up their religion. And I think that's an untenable choice. Perhaps I'm more influenced by my background than, than I like to admit. It would be a slap in the face, I believe, to uh, family members if I decided not to circumcise. Because my family's views on circumcision are uh, basically what my views were before I started questioning it, that it's a given, it's just the way it is. I, I never really regretted it, and I still, to, to this day, don't regret doing it. But I, I do regret a lot of the pain and suffering that it, it caused Angela because uh, we had a lot of long nights and, and long talks about it, and there's no turning back. So as much as I sympathize with her feeling, I mean, there's nothing we could do about it, except that if we had another boy, we wouldn't circumcise him. Families are listening to the experts, but ultimately, the decision is deeply personal. When we had our second son, when Isaac was born, um, you know, we were, we, were, we were sure that we didn't want to do a circumcision again. 99% sure, I guess, because there was still the, that question that would come up, these guys aren't going to look the same. Is that going to be an issue for them? And when it came down to it, we, we thought, you know what, there's such different boys. This is just going to be another difference. We're going to have our son circumcised. And I don't think I would have arrived at the decision to circumcise my son had I not been uh, comfortable with it. I think the bottom line about circumcision is that you have to do what's right for you. And if I had any advice for anyone to give, it would be definitely do not make these kinds of decisions in the hospital. The last thing you want to be doing, you know, 12 hours after you've given birth is, is talking to a surgeon about, about a circumcision. It's just not right.